We do, we do in fact have Yu-Gi-Oh forces, which is unfortunate. So Eureka, for those who are unfamiliar, is kind of like a super show and tell. This is Hyper Genesis as a regular card. Uh, I've got two, I've got two Graft Digger's Cages here and some more Spell Pierces and Fluster Swords. And technically Echoing Truth. Excuse me. Playing decks like this is always weird because you look at a hand like this and you and like so is this hand like the nuts or is this hand like not good enough I think this is not good enough I think if like one of these was the land I'd be inclined to keep and you get to keep with two can't so like the problem is like show and tell isn't good enough because Ugin we can't show and tell into play Seems decent. My, my, gut, my gut says I want to just like throw this back. Cause like this hand needs multiple things, right? It like needs mana and yeah, I'm gonna mull this. I think that hand needs, needs too much to get going. I think this hand is actually arguably better in the abstract than the other one because it has an Emrakul. That means we only need a show and tell. That's actually the reason I get the Yu-Gi-Oh forces from Trader so often. Their shopping cart defaults to giving me the uh, cheapest version of a card. Force, Force, Eureka. Uh, yeah, we just want all of these, right? If we're technically, we're technically short uh, a mana there. Yeah, think think of Eureka as like super show and tells copies five through seven. We have three three Eurekas and then four show and tells. I mean, if they really need to land, they should wait till their turn, right? So they're probably a combo deck. Very very likely storm. Even if you're brainstorm flooded, you want to wait. Actually, you could probably argue being brainstorm flooded is like more of a reason to wait. Okay, opponent's playing a combo deck. Oh lordy, is this a mirror match? Why do they have two? Why do, why do they have two tropical islands? It's just like storm that drew both tropical islands. Would like a soul land. That's that's something. All right, I'm going to put back this and put back this. They just fetch for both. <laughs> this is actually a fucking mirror match, isn't it? Am I supposed to guess this card? I don't know if I'm supposed to cast this card. Look, I didn't register this deck to not cast my show and tell. I didn't register this deck to not cast my show and tell. How are we winning the game? We don't win the game if we don't cast show and tell. I'm not here to not cast the card, like... Ah! Ah! 
Oh, wait for omniscience. Okay. Wait for omniscience makes sense. All right. The final countdown. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Are you stuck, child? Pony cast blue demonic tutor. They're going to force me back. Yeah, we should have we should have waited. Yep. Uh Okay. Ugin doesn't seem very good in a mirror. Karn seems fine because we can Eureka and then clean up. Carpet comes in. Okay, sure. What am I cutting then? Most of these cards seems good. Like, okay, like out of all these cards that we want, what do we not want then? Karn, maybe Karn's not good enough. I'm sorry, Karn. Please don't hate me. I don't have any way to win the game if we cut show and tell. Lotus petals come out. That makes sense. That makes sense. We're bringing in carpets, cut lotus petals. Cut a Eureka. Okay, let's do this. Just hard cash your things off carpet, right? Uh, I guess I'm keeping this one. These blue decks are so consistent. Random one ofs in the deck JMP are just like, they're so medium. Like we don't have any way to tutor from one ofs. So like, just like having a bunch of one ofs in our deck seems foolish. We're supposed to wait till we have omniscience, right? Karn's the more fun one of. Also, like, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely skewed this deck towards the matches I expect to play on Magic Online. Like, I haven't played against... I haven't played against a show and tell deck on Magic Online in probably my last five or six leagues. And like, we register show and tell for the first time when we're playing a show and tell mirror match. Like, I have to force this, I think. Because if they're doing it, they could probably win the game. I feel like my opponent is less dumb than I am.
Yeah, they, you're supposed to... So I shouldn't have cast show until last game. I should have waited until we have Omniscience. Then you cast Omniscience and then cast your Emrakul. All right, let's find out if they're actually less dub than we are. Yep. Good beat, good beat. All right, moving on up. Do, 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 do. Uh, we're waiting for six match bumper just like say good morning afternoon and good night to everyone wherever you're out in the world hopefully you're not getting got as bad as we got got that game if you're new here welcome i appreciate you choosing to spend part of your thursday here with us and there's a lot of different things you could be doing different people you could be watching so thanks for spending your time here if you are enjoying the content please consider using that subscribe button down below it uh it's the best way you could sort my content directly. It's currently September, so all new subscribers on the channel here are half off this month. If you're enjoying what you see, you could also support my content by supporting my sponsors. MTGOTraders.com will have to buy and sell Magic Online cards with you. If you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on all of your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including Pokemon, Magic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! singles. Using code Jeff5, you could save 5% on all of your TCG orders with them. InkedGaming.com can help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you could save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, and sleeves there. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from their wide selection of artwork that they already have on their website. And finally, SpareDeck.com, they offer kind of a unique service. They can rent you any physical, standard, or modern deck. If you're someone like me that plays both online and occasionally you still play in paper, local events, or larger events, you can rent from them as opposed to purchasing purchasing the deck. I'd have to worry about buy lists and stuff like that after you're done with it. It's super, super convenient. Use them for a lot of my, my paper tournaments. Most of my paper tournaments, really. Everything that's not Legacy, I go through them. And even when I do play Legacy, a lot of the time I get the non-Legacy legal cards from them. Oh, and actually own physical magic cards. Just the sneakeriest of all the keepers right here. JK. I mean, yep, this is a hand. You know what's really sad? That you can't show and tell in a Karn. It's really sad. Don't daze me, bro. They're picking which card they're pitching to force. Please don't lily on me. 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 Tell me when it's over, chat. Tell tell me when it's over, chat. Our opponent's about to interact with us, and it's gonna be sad. Ah, we have craftily outplayed our opponent here. All right, so Besiju and Carpet of Flowers get to come in. Correct. Is like cut the Lotus Petals here? That seems pretty clean. I don't know if this is a... Uh, Leyline match. I feel like Leyline's just for Storm. Uh, 
think I like this. Is it just for slow white decks? Uh, Liana of the Veil. They might also not be... They might be like a grindy mid-range deck. Hmm. That's fair, Richie. I think this hand's on the low end of keepable. Not super exciting, but probably fine. Can we play Honor Code Hex? Everyone agrees not to play Last Guard Sentience. Yeah, we didn't see... I mean, we killed them on turn one, right? So, like, if we see, like, Kims and Thought Seizes, I'll probably... Hopefully this is a Baleful Strix. Just to ponder, okay. Morning, Jet. Confirmed Delver. Ponder here, good for a show and tell. I think I actually want to shuffle that, right? Shuffle that. Pretty far off of doing any of those. This is a pile, you're not wrong. Mmm, that hurts. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Both the uh, both folks passed one after another. It's funny to two Esper lists right in a row. I really wish the Esper list was better in modern. Like, that type of fair interactive deck is the one I really enjoy playing. Mmm, okay. Magic is a skill game, and the better player often wins. I pick this one. We could get Liliana. We could, we could get Liliana. We could... We could get Deluge for 15. That's true, too. Diabolic Edict. Yeah, they, have, they have a lot of cards that are good here. That being said, like, we're not here to not cast a show and tell, right? Like, casting show and tell is what we signed up for. Emrakul the Promised End is interesting. The problem with Emrakul the Promised End is that Emrakul is bad against the graveyard hate that people are probably bringing in against you anyways. We should play some, like, traditional sneak and show, probably. This deck seems sweet. Uh, you can't actually put Planeswalkers into playoff of show and tell, which is really sad. Otherwise, I would, like, be 10 out of 10 have an all-planeswalker show-and-tell deck, because that would just be gas. 
to be like the hottest, the hottest of fires. You can put Ugin into play off of Eureka, and you can cast it using Omniscience. That seems fine. Like, just use the show and tell. All right, all right. We get to we get to Eureka next turn. Maybe I'm supposed to play these out. I'm actually gonna crack this fetch here because there's a trop on top of my deck that I know I don't want. Man, this legacy format's hard. Why have I been... Man, I feel like I've wasted so much time. All right, basic swamp death right shaman. Should I bring in the ley lines? Should I, br should I bring in the ley lines? I don't... I just click submit? Like... They're... they're <laughs> No, come back, opponent. Yeah, come back. How do we feel about this? The carpets actually let us cast, um... The carpets actually let us cast, uh... Yeah, I cut the Besager. That's, I have a Besager in the main deck, so I cut that. Minus Ugin. Ugin's really good against four-color pile. It's probably better than Karn, actually. I'm gonna do this. Carpets let me cast Ley Lines. Look, this is Legacy... We're pretty sure they're a blue deck, okay? We're gonna bring in the carpets. And if they're not a blue deck, we'll brainstorm the carpets away. It's fine. NBD. I should not have kept this hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, always remember how much justice there is in the world. Always remember how much justice there is in the world. Why is there an Architects of Will in your deck? Oh no, they're not a blue deck. What? They're not a blue deck. Why? Why aren't there islands in your deck, opponent? I don't understand. Can we draw a lotus petal? I boarded the lotus petals out, didn't I? Man, this would have been a lotus petal. Nice hand, idiot. Now we're going to play this out so if we draw a green source, we could Eureka next turn. Put our friends into play. Draw 
Tropical Island, please. All right, well, the good news is we get to Tropical Island for a mana source. The good news is we're going to get to Tropical Island for a mana source. That's the, that's the good news, ladies and gentlemen. Are they thinking about trying to bolt me or punishing fire me? You can't! I'm Leyland! If I play a land, I have to sacrifice this, so I want to wait and do this at the red step. So, I want to cast the intuition. We are going to go get a land here. Oh no, they have a red elemental blast! Ding! Fries are done. Reb this one. But you got... I got this one. That's all I got. Go ahead, friendo. Go ahead, friendo. This is a no justice stream. No justice is allowed here. No, zero, zero adjusterino. Thought seizing themselves. <laughs> nice deck. Nice deck. Can't edict me, had a ley line. Uh, for the person who asked earlier, I will 10 out of 10 play. Do I want to play modern? That's, it's so tough if I want to play modern. What does Charter Course do? Oh, we can't even play this until the new set comes out. Yeah, probably not. Kept one land city of the traders of the draw because it had a ley line. To be fair, that ley line won the game. We are definitely going to Vintage Belcher at some point on this stream. That being said, this league with this deck is going to be my last, my last set of magic for the day. I'd love to go first. We just keep killing people. Is that allowed? Keep. This hand's decent. It needs a threat to cast with the Omnis Omniscience. Huh. I'm gonna hide the Emrakul. Draw the Omniscience. I think, I think that's right. Maybe I'm supposed to take the Emrakul and like leave Omniscience on top of my deck. Would I play Modern Belcher? No, probably not. Oh no! Oh no, Urborg Duress. Now you need another show and tell effect. Because Yorika is going away. Urborg Duress. This is probably the Turbo Depths deck. Auto pass here. Shh. 
Show me show and tell. I think I'll take both of these actually. That's the turn here. Turbo dip should mean we're getting another turn here. Maybe I'm supposed to play this pedal out. Yeah, I'm probably supposed to play this pedal out since I have two Omniscience. Alright, the three looks at a Eureka or a show and tell here. Alright, the brainstorm gives me three redraws at a show and tell. Once I have city puddle, no longer have enough mana to cast a Eureka. I guess we could have also hit Pedal Eureka. Yep, it's gonna be, be one turn short here in the combo mirror. Oh, we can go Pedal City. It's unfortunate there were four show intels in our deck and only two Eurekas. Oh, I guess that's fair. Yeah, we technically technically had outs there. We could have found pedal plus another show and tell too. No, wait. I didn't have a shuffle, right? No, I could have played that and shuffled. All right, yeah, you're right. You're right. I could have. I could have. I technically had a very slim slim out there that I could have taken. All right, so I want these ley lines in for sure. Karn and Ugin kill their thing, which is kind of cute. Intuition a little bit slow. Leave my fluster storms in as disruption and anti disruption. Yeah, besage you out easily. Yeah, Echoing Truth seems fine. Let's try. It's decent. Needs a fatty, but it's got Leyline plus Fluster Storm in it. Ugin kind of works. So, like, if they're making it with Vampire Hex Mage, you can down tick the Ugin, and then they lose the Hex Mage, and they can't make a token in response because they'll lose the token to the trigger. Like, Ugin's definitely better than Karn in that respect. Um, opponent's deck has a lot of spells in it. They play Crop Rotation, they play Sylvan Scrying, um, they play Into the North, they play Discard Spells. I think Fluster Storm's fine. I don't know that it's better than anything to the board. It's possible, like, leaving Intuition it is better than that. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the intuitions are better than Ugin. I wasn't thinking about Vampire Hex Mage killing Ugin. It's a pretty big downside.
<clears throat> Waiting on the opponent to do stuff. Some things maybe too. This is why there's fluster storms in our deck. So, um, I think it's actually technically correct. I should have used the Misty Rain Forest there because um, not only can this get a basic forest and this can't, but leaving two different fetch lines in play is valuable against a deck that could potentially have Pithing Needle in it. Looking for a big scary. That's not a big scary. It's a race to see who can produce a big scary first. You fetch there for thinning. I don't think so, not with brainstorms in our deck. There's four braid swords in our deck, so. I mean, you could do too bad a probe needle. Um, I don't, it's the one that lets you look at their hand, right? It's a good observation on Rogue's part. I agree with that. Yeah, fetching, fetching here seems poor. Very dark depths away from a big scary. We are, we are flooding a little bit. Well, I mean, I don't really need the extra bed at this point. Dead to crap rotation. Eh. And again, like, this is one of those games where even in formats like Legacy that are lower variants, you know, it's, uh, Low variance is a no variance. I don't think we made any objectively. I don't think we made any objectively incorrect plays here. And we uh, sometimes you just perk off and die. Like we had a pretty reasonable opening hand. We just needed to like find can trips or pressure. Man, there wasn't stuff coming for <laughs> long, long time there. G game game threes are overrated. Game threes are overrated. Yeah, seems fine, right? Seems fine. This is a storm player. All right. Is this the same person we played in this league? Oh, that was the other league. All right. 
Right, this hand is less good against Storm. Magic online? Do y'all y'all still see the stream, right? This is just this is just locked up. Alright, enjoy the sponsor screen while we reload Magic Online here. Oh, Magic Online. Oh, Moto, oh, Moto. All right, worked that time. For probably just a force or a fluster storm, right? Hmm. I think I'm actually supposed to keep these. It's possible I'm supposed to not uh, not draw the gristle brand there. But if we Eureka next turn, we can put the Gristle Brand to play the draw a bunch of cards. Oh, so I think this is fine. I think it's better than the chance of drawing a random Fluster or Force off of two draws. Especially when our opponent's deck is full of discard. While the night is dark and full of discard. This is the I'm going to try and kill you this turn brainstorm. For those who aren't familiar with Storm, this is the we're probably dead brainstorm. Lotus Petal, Ritual, Ritual, LED, Tutor, Retain Priority, Crack LED, Pass and Flames, Ritual, Ritual, Tutor, Tendrils, Triggers. Which card? Discard right here. It's a matchup where Ley Lines will be coming in for sure. Probably Graph Digger's Cage as well. Yeah, Carpet seemed fine. Carpet seem perfectly acceptable. Yep. Leyline adds another layer to like what they have to jump through to make it work. Yeah, it it just it, Leyline's just overall good in this matchup for a lot of reasons. Permanent basics, exactly. Please just be a discard spell. God bless. Means we shouldn't be dead this turn. Alright, so long, Eureka, my old friend. Grizzly bees. Huh. 
Huh. So, remember when I said I should have left this on top? I guess they could have just taken the Ember Cool and then shuffled my deck then. It's like it's very similar. I can't intuition for anything useful here. Am I just supposed to put the Ember Cool into play? I guess I could wait a turn. An intuition for the Omniscience. Yeah, that's probably better. I'm just going to go ahead and pass. We get intuition for Om Omniscience. And then Eureka and the Omniscience and then cast the... Cast the Emrakul. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Zero Repent. Legacy is one of my favorite formats in Magic right now. We're going to be playing mostly Legacy and Vintage during my Magic time on this channel uh, until the new set drops. When the new set drops, we're going to play some Standard, but we'll still we'll still have some non-rotating non -rotatings in here on occasion. Oh no, not at all. Playing playing in paper magic events is like really expensive. Not I I play magic for fun and occasionally for profit, not to spew. Games games fairly high variance to be I'm too old to be traveling around the country now. <laughs> did that did that play again? We actually played the nine post listing in to start off the sporting chat, and the more I played the deck, the less the less impressed with it I was. It really it really feels like it has a bunch of similar good and bad matchups to the Tron deck without solving any of the issues that the Tron deck has. It's like not great against fast combo and it beats up on like mid-range decks. So All right, so we got kind of punished for waiting, I guess. Cast this and then die next turn. Um, I've I spent some time playing the four color Leovold decks and the three color Leovold decks in Legacy, and every time I play one of the Leovold mid range decks, it just it feels like a bad Delver deck. If we're just being, I should have played the pedal, I guess. I don't know, we're probably just dead here. Am I dead? God bless. Last card's petition, okay. Am I dead yet here? I'm getting ad nauseum. Not particularly rogue. I think I ran pretty cold in that that event. So they hit a ritual. All right, so now we're dead. They go ritual, ritual, pedal, past in flames, lethal. Man, these force of will decks are so good against storm. They're so they're so good against storm. They're not very good against storm. All right, craft diggers cage. The storm deck just has so much disruption. You have to cut through. It's unreal. You have so much disruption. All right, so these are the cards I want. I don't want to besage you. Am I trimming the Lotus Petals? Because like, I feel like going fast in this matchup is not what we want to do. We're kind of more of the control deck, right? Petal say, I feel, I feel like we're more of the control deck. I feel like Omniscience is good because it lets us um, it lets us kill them the same turn. I'm going to trim a Eureka, I think. Maybe I don't want both cages. Uh, yeah, that seems decent. 
I'm gonna go island pass here and just like pierce their setup pretty aggressively. This might be overly aggressive. I kind of just want to guarantee to use my mana this turn. I'm still really not sure what I'm looking for yet. Like, I need multiple things to make this hand start working, so I'm just going to pass here again. I just feel like a lot of really inexperienced players like look at decks like and you hear people talk about like force force and days keep these decks in check and like people that don't have experience actually playing legacy like hear that and they think that means like these combo decks fold to, to force and days all of their own but in reality that's like that's not the case right like they're folding to do those plus pressure. Huh. Put this back, put this back, put this back, draw. Hopefully we the spell pierces enough to keep us from dying next turn. Let's get ad nauseum. And hopefully we can spell pierce. Well, I don't want to pierce this. They're probably getting ad nauseum, right? They have exactly enough mana for ad nauseum. It, it, like, if the pierce is going to be good, just pierce the actual ad nauseum. Like, tendrils isn't anywhere near lethal right now. And, like, then we get to, like, if they cast ad nauseum, they burn the lotus petals, too. They need Ritual plus Therapy as their last cards. And like if they have Ritual plus Therapy, they're going to win anyways, because if we pierce them, they get Ad Nauseum, but then they Ritual and cast the Ad Nauseum anyways. Deal. I'm casting it like this just in case there's something weird like a red elemental blast so I can spell pierce that.
this is actually kind of funny. So I can pay for two fluster storms, and then I can spell pierce the last one using omniscience. Oh man, maybe they were right. These spell pierces are so good against Storm. We won because we had spell pierce. Do we think the cage is slightly better than a carpet? I think I'd buy that, especially on the draw. We're right back. I need to check a diaper. I might need to change real quick. This hand's not good enough, right? It just needs a lot of help. Like if this was a brainstorm, I'd keep it. We're two and two in this league. This is game three of this match. Booster Co Bra Bowser Koopa. Thanks for all the great content. Always, always enjoy how you talk through decisions of the game. It's very informative. Thank you for the continued support an entire year. Very generous. Welcome back again and again and again. Have us, Ward. I'm like sad to mulligan get a ley line opener. We've probably get so many ley line openers today. Rewarded. Bottom that, bottom that. Guess this. This hand's actually like the stones, right? There's like, I'm not like, could I pick a better? Sure. That's damn it. All right. Hopefully this cage means we don't die next turn. Mmm, -doke. Please don't kill me. 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 Play a, play a land and a second kid trip. Good thing we didn't keep that seven. You're not wrong. <laughs> Mulliganing bad sevens is good, regardless of whether or not Regardless of whether or not you get there, just, you know, being objective. You're not wrong. These big combo decks are definitely like edge of your seat type magic. This is like the big red feel with like, is this deck genuinely good? So honestly, like, I wonder... I wonder if, like, the Planeswalkers seem really cute, and, like, I cut. We get to cast the Leyline with Omniscience, right? We cashed! We cashed! All right, so thoughts on the Eureka deck. Um, I think the, I think, as sad as I am to say it, I think the Planeswalkers are probably too cute. I, I would need to get a feel for playing Sneak and Show 
over playing this too. But like, I feel like it always felt kind of awkward to me. It always felt kind of awkward to me that like, open that chest. Uh, that's, that's a quarter of the way to opening the chest. We need $2 worth of cheers or donations to open a chest. Chest costs $2. So, I think the Planeswalkers are probably too cute. It always felt awkward to me that the Omniscience decks were playing Sneak and Show because, like, this card is only good with Show and Tell. So, I think Eureka is actually kind of fine as just, like, Show and Tells. Like, this is basically like playing nine copies of Show and Tell, right? Like, is what, is what this feels like. And, like, Show and Tell is, like, your more powerful card anyways a lot of the time, so... Open that chest as as you command as you command tipper open one of these yes open Survey says ooh look at this a healthy a healthy reminder of why why we don't uh, why we don't open open treasure chest without donations Uh, close, close that chest, right? Just, shh. Yeah, but anywho, so like, I feel like the way these games played out, I kind of just want like more of the cards that are that are good, right? So like, I think these are just too cute, and I think if I was gonna play this again, like with the with the idea of not doing cute things, but like trying to build just like the best version of this deck, I would just like put another Emrakul and another Omniscience in here. I think I'd just like probably start here if I wanted to, if I wanted to change anything. You like maxing on preordains? That's, that's another interesting suggestion too. Just like play, play more cantrips as opposed to like playing more things that you care about. I feel like if like, so like the upside to having all of these show and tells means we're going to find them more often. It's just like playing more combo pieces as opposed to playing more selection doesn't seem completely unreasonable. I also saw, so like I was looking at a bunch of different variations of Eureka lists that people have like played in smaller events and different things that have been posted online over the course of the last year. Um, last night when I was putting this together and it seemed like there were, there were a couple of people that were like playing like Elvish spirit guides in the deck too, like on top of Lotus Petal. But I mean, like, is it really? We have, we have all of these. Like, you want, you want Omni. It could be, so like, these two slots could be anything else. It, it might honestly just be the right to, like, we should just put cantrips in there. I could definitely see just, like, maxing, maxing preordained doesn't seem like the worst possible thing you could be doing with your life. I think Elder Spirit Guide is wrong. Maybe. I have enjoyed getting people on turbo. It, it is a lot of mana sources, though, right? Because, like, we already have 24 mana sources in this deck. The Ugin didn't really do anything there. We were just like winning games because we were a turbo show and tell deck, basically. Probe could be okay. I think Probe's probably worse than worse than playing a preordain or two. I'm gonna tentatively put two more preordains in here because it's like the non-committal. Let's just play 12 CAD trips and be consistent. The ley lines were, were pretty reasonable in the games where we brought them in, so like I could see I don't love ley lines in general, but like the fact that we could show and tell a ley line in and we cast it off Carpet of Flowers too means that like Ooh I like I like the idea of Sylvan Library. That sounds hot. That sounds like That sounds really good, actually. Want to talk about adding consistency? Like, this is another must counter for control decks, too. Yeah, let's try that. I think I want to try that. You could maybe trim a land. Like, maybe we don't need all three tropical islands. I don't know. The, your colored sources are kind of strange, too, because, like... Six of these lands are colorless sources here. Like, maybe we don't need a main deck besides you. Um, 
So libraries not great against other fast combo decks, but a lot of the time your games are going a little bit longer with a deck like this. Like, I know we turned one and turned two people off, but you could win games that last longer than that. Yeah, Joe and Teldex have played Jace in the past before too, which I guess you could technically put into play with Eureka, which is kind of funny. Uh, trust me when I say you'll like... Oh no, are the Z-Bars you like all gone? Oh, there it is. There's a chocolate brownie Z-Bar for the little fat boy. Sylvan does take a turn, but you can play Sylvan on one, which is kind of nice. What's going on, Dino? My morning swell. We 3-2'd with this. We 1-3'd with this.